What's up, Liron here, and today I'm gonna teach you a trick I learned when I was about 10 years old. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today, as I mentioned, I wanna show you a trick that I really learned at a young age on how you can draw very easily and simply three-dimensional shapes and how you can practice this skill set. And I've been doing this uh, intuitively, subconsciously, without thinking about it too much consciously, and I think it really helped me in developing my three-dimensional perception of understanding what I'm looking at. Granted, you need some more skills just than that to be a good artist, but one major part, I think, is the ability to portray what you think see in a believable three-dimensional manner. So with that being said, let's move on to the desk and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so I'll now show you how this uh, trick is done. And I have this cross here just so that the camera focuses on the paper because if it's blank, it doesn't focus. So uh, I wanna show you the basics. So what I do is I just create this random shape, okay? And now my only goal is to drop down a few of these lines just lines that go uh, vertical, okay? And then I'm recreating the same shape that I see here. So I'm going over it like this and it's parallel to the first shape. That's all there is to it. And there you go, a three dimensional shape. Let me show it to you again with a stupider, goofier shape, okay? Dropping down uh, vertical lines from all of the edges. So I have a, an edge here, I'm dropping it, an edge here. And now all I have to do is follow the parallel shape, quote unquote, of the top part. Same here. Okay, that's all I'm doing. It looks so dumb, but it's actually a great way of doing this. Let me show you uh, one of the most basic examples of this I can give you, and that is the, the uh, can, like a soft drink can. So it's just a circle with lines going down like this. And then the same shape you have here, you have here up top. And I really messed this one up, so let me do another one faster. And this bottom part is parallel. And it will be the same thing if I just do a box or, or a, a square, you know. So I'm putting this square in, dropping down lines, and they have to be of uh, equal length, usually. Then I'll connect them with lines that are parallel to the top lines. And this is all there is to it. And I would sit down as a kid, I remember doing this. I would sit down and I do these wacky sorts of shapes. And it's the exact same thing. You recognize the edges when it comes to the uh, right to left. You just drop a line, 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 drop another line. And then all I have to do is connect them with a parallel shape to the shape I have here. Now there are some intricacies, so if this is parallel, this line is gonna be a little lower. You see, this edge of the line doesn't end here, it ends here. And then this, same thing goes, same length. So it will end here, parallel to this line. And same here. And this is assuming that this distance is uh, the same as this distance, okay? It's assuming that you just take a shape and you stretch it. Okay, so these distances don't have to be equal, in fact. They can be different. This can go like this. It can go like this. this. It means that this part is literally shorter than this part. Okay, it can be the case, depending on the shape you want to do. So let me just continue doing that. And I have a piece of paper here that I hope doesn't fall off as I move the paper. Uh, I just have it so that it reflects back some of the light and it's not too dark. Let me show you another maybe uh, kind of a straight shape like this. Lots of straight lines. Same thing, drop a line, and again, they have to be of similar, if you want the shape to be of equal height, they'll have to be of similar uh, length. Drop a line, drop a line, drop a line, and just start connecting them using the parallel line to the top part. So same here. Again, with time, slowly, with practice, you'll get the hang of it, and you'll do it like very easily. It's so easy, and again, I got this at the age of 10, just because I'm very observational and I look at things constantly, but you will get it. Sorry if the camera is a little shaky, by the way. So let's try another one, just a circle. And I could change the height of the shape like this. I could start with a very, very uh, short height, and then we get a, a hockey puck, for example. Or I can go with a bit of a longer, kind of shape, okay? Now, one more thing I wanna show you is, so far we stretched the shapes vertically. Let me show you what happens when you stretch them uh, horizontally. So I'm gonna start up 
uh, start out with, let's say, uh, this kind of an, a weird shape, okay? And then I'm gonna stretch it out to the right. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just using parallel lines, and I'll get the exact same thing, okay? I could use a similar shape to this one as well. I could do this, it's just gonna be a little awkward, but I can stretch this also sideways. So it'll be this, and this, and this, and this goes like this, parallel to this line, and that goes like this, parallel to this line, and we get the exact same idea, and that's that's the, the gist of it. That's all there is to it. Now I'm gonna show you another final example, and, and then we're gonna move on uh, to the next part, okay? So we have this weird shape with lots of weird curves, strange lines, and I'm just going to stretch it out, okay? It's going to be like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, every edge that I recognize, and then connect them parallel to this, parallel to this, almost parallel, almost got it, that's fine, parallel to this, and here, because it's invisible, you don't see it, it's obstructed by this part, okay? So now let's talk a bit about three-dimensionality because that's the next topic. Um, so I wanna show you how to cut a hole into one of these shapes. And this is another really cool trick that'll help you. So to cut a hole, you just have to draw any shape you want, but let's start with something simple. So another square inside that square, and the same thing goes with the parallel lines at the edges. Now here you can see, here you can see, but here you can see, so I dropped that line. And then we cut a hole effectively in this box. Let me show it to you again with this shape. So I'm gonna cut a hole, and this time let's have it a different shaped hole. So something really awkward and weird. Every corner and edge, I'm gonna drop that kind of line, okay? And then I cut a hole through this shape. Let's do it with a cylindrical shape. So I'm gonna cut a hole, I have no corners, so no lines to draw, and there's a hole in that shape. Let's do it with a curved shape. Cutting a hole, and there really isn't much lines to draw. You could draw a very gentle line because this is a rather curved part, but if it was sharper, maybe you would have seen a more um, well-defined line. Again, okay, that's all there is to it. And you can create a shape, let me show you. So let me just do something like really large, like so, and have the bottom part like this, and I'm, I'm dumbing this down significantly, I'm just showing you the very basic technique, and I can have several holes in here, so let's do one like this, and one like that, and depending on the height of the shape, you may be able to see the other side, and I'm gonna demonstrate this in just a moment, but again, corner, corner, let's do a, a, a um, square that goes the other way around, uh, corner, okay? So you see very, very simple stuff the moment you start to get a grasp of it. Okay, there we go, we cut a hole. Now, let me show you a shape where you can see the bottom side and that'll be this hockey puck. So I'm gonna cut a really large hole here. And I think, well, this is gonna be problematic because the bottom is here. So no, that's not a good example. I'm gonna do another one like this. And this shape is gonna be very, very short and very uh, low hanging. Then I'm gonna cut a hole through its middle part, like this. Now because the hole is so large, you can see the bottom part, so I'm gonna do a line that's the same length as this. This is the rule, same length, assuming this shape is all in the, the same height. And then I'll connect this as well with the, these kinds of lines in parallel. And then we cut a hole. So if we were to look at the ground or the table, so let's say the table is, has a dark cloth on it, sorry about that. So just to get that dark cloth effect, this is all a part of that dark cloth. See where I'm going with this? This is a hole in the shape. And it's such an easy way of drawing three-dimensional shape and, shapes and it will help you better understand three-dimensionality. Okay, I was, again, I was doing it when I was like 10, maybe 11, I don't remember. Uh, but it was so, so, such a simple way. You can do the same on the other planes of the shape. shape. So for example, I'll cut a square here. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but this time I have to notice what line I'm gonna do it parallel to, so parallel to this line. You can imagine I rotated the entire thing, now it's parallel to this line, pretty much. And it will actually meet this line here in this invisible spot. Okay, so I hope that starts to make sense to you. If not, don't worry, just practice it like a robot, it will start making sense to you. You could cut a hole through every object here and it'll work. Okay, so now we talked about the shapes and how to turn them into three-dimensional objects. You could even do this with, um, I think you could even do this with a 2D shape, so like this cross here. 
and I could just drop some lines and like so. So this shape doesn't have a lot of width here, but it does have that length, okay? So this may, it even look, looks a bit like an engine or propeller or something like this. If we were to put it inside a cylind cylindrical shape, you will kind of get a, a, an airplane propeller. Just an example of how, of a, of a practical application of this. Um, so this is what you'll get. It can be a flat shape as well. Um, so I talked about how to turn the shapes three-dimensional. I showed you the simple example of a box and a cylinder. Now I'm going to show you, and I, we also cut holes into the shapes. Now I want to show you how to shade these, okay? So we, all you have to do is think about where the light is coming from. And hopefully you can also recognize the three-dimensionality of the shapes here. So let's assume light comes from this side and it hits this shape. So it's going to cast a shadow that's with that same direction of the light, okay? And it's all gonna be parallel. Now this line is gonna be parallel to this line right here, you guessed it. And this line goes back in parallel to this invisible line. Sorry, you can't see. Now you can see and then parallel to this line. There we go. We got the shape, the shadow of the shape. And I don't want this to focus too much on shading so I won't go into too many details. But what I will mention is that there's also a shadow on this side of the shape because it's less uh, exposed to the light. So I'm gonna shade that as well. Okay, and again, I'm keeping it very simple, very down, I'm not even sharpening my pencil. I want this to be as simple as possible. Now this side of the of the shape is also less exposed to light because it's inside and it's also against the direction of the light. So I'm gonna shade that as well. And this part will probably be even darker because it's even less exposed than this side here. Hopefully you can again grasp the shape. Now usually what happens with light and shadow is the closer it is to the shape, the darker it is. So we can start doing that kind of thing here and gradually lighten up. And same here, gradually lighten up, which will probably make us do this, depending on the settings, a little darker as well. And again, I'm doing this as dumb as I can, just so that it's very clear. Same thing with this cylindrical shape. So it, let's say light comes from the very same direction. So I'm gonna drop a shadow here. Here now, because there is a shape here probably, the shadow is gonna climb on top of that. So it'll touch the edge of the shape and then it'll meet it maybe somewhere around here and then it'll go back down, same line. So this entire part of the shape is gonna be a little shaded except for this top part that I uh, mistakenly shaded a little too much, but in any case, and this shadow is dropped on the table. I will do also a perspective uh, lesson for kind of, I wanna call it perspective drawing for lazy people, but it's gonna be very, very simple, okay? Um, and also this side. Now, because this is a cylinder, then it's not all gonna be equally shaded. So the more we move to the right and get closer to the light source, the lighter it's gonna become. So I'm gonna start dark, and then I'm gonna go a little lighter. You see, and then we get that gradual change. And that's all there is to it. And I'm doing this again, very rough and simple on purpose. Now let's say that the light source hits this shape and it's coming towards us. So the light spreads uh, the shadow towards our direction. This part is in the shadow. This part is also in the shadow. And there you have it. This part is also in the shadow. Being incredibly lazy here. Just filling up a page like this will will help you progress a lot. Now let's cast the shadow in this shape. So let's say light comes from the right, from the very right, okay? Sorry, now you can better see it. So what areas are gonna be more exposed to light and less exposed to light? The top part will usually be more exposed, but everything that's on the left side will be less exposed. So this part should probably be darker. This part will be slightly darker. This part is a little lighter because it is closer to the light. This part should be as dark as this, probably. As long as the light source is so far away that the distance between this and the delta between the distance of the light source to this part and the light source to this part is um, uh, marginal. Okay, that's, that's the, the whole thing. Like, if the light source was here, there was a lamp here or a light bulb here, okay, that's a terrible attempt at a desk bulb this part would have been much darker than this part. But because the light source, we're gonna place it somewhere way over there, the delta between this distance and this distance gets marginal and less important, okay? So same kind of level of darkness. Here, it's gonna be a little darker than this because it's inner, probably, maybe not. Now we also have the cast shadow of the shape on the table itself. Sorry, I dropped the paper that I told you I put here. Uh, I never do this, but I decided to do it this time. Hopefully it'll stick here. Sorry for moving the camera, uh, but in any case, 
Uh, this is gonna cast a shadow to the left as well, so I'm gonna cast that shadow and darken it up just a little bit here. This part's probably gonna have a cast shadow on it as well, and there you go, the shape. Uh, and it's the same principle that goes into every sh shape, sorry, I lost my voice, uh, every shape that you'll uh, draw or paint, okay? Or sketch, or whatever. So hopefully that makes sense, hopefully I didn't confuse you with all of these different shapes. It's a really simple way of drawing three-dimensional shapes in a fun way, again, uh, very uh, easy going. You just draw the shape, I'm gonna draw it over the shapes I already drew, and just connect it using parallel lines, and there we go, Bob's your uncle, and you got it, okay? That's, I think, the first time I used Bobby, Bob's your uncle on camera ever, so you can mark that, that timestamp as a special event. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, very simple stuff. It can be a bit challenging in the beginning, and if it is, practice it, you will eventually get it. I hope you enjoyed this one, and now we can wrap up this video. So this is it, I really hope you enjoyed this one and hopefully you can see how this will help you even if you don't know too much about uh, perspective and all sorts of things which I do plan on making a video about perspective in particular. Um, it can show you how to construct three-dimensional shapes out of anything really and when you train yourself to do it, to actually sketch these types of shapes, uh, you will also start seeing them everywhere around you. I'm looking around me because they're literally everywhere around me. And you'll be outside, maybe you'll do a plain air or, a, uh, or an urban sketching session, and then suddenly a shape will register and you'll be like, huh, I sketched something similar. Now I understand why these lines move that way and this line meets this line at this point. So things make sense. This is a very niche kind of exercise that you would just do right now and enjoy and have fun. You know, just draw a random shape, connect it, create this type of a, you know, a structure that's very basic, but still I think you'll find very helpful long-term. So it's just another exercise to add to your list of exercises. I'm definitely gonna add this video to my playlist of sketching exercises, so be sure to check that out. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you still haven't subscribed, be sure you subscribe, because I post tons of videos and hit the bell button, because that way you'll receive notifications. You can then save the video for later if you don't have time to watch it at the moment. I'm trying to do videos that you will enjoy, and I have a few upcoming videos that are pure requests by uh, by you okay so I want to thank you so much and I will see you again in another vid real soon